from gardening to animals to extreme renovations. Welcome to homesteading at College Hill Farm. Welcome back to College Hill Farm. Today is the second day of making a set of cattle racks for my 1999 Ford F-150. Today we're going to hopefully finish up doing the cattle racks for our Ford F-150. Uh, I've got the boards cut. Now I need to make two pieces of angle iron uh, 30 inches long to fasten to the uprights for the front that goes behind the window. You'll see what I'm talking about when I put it on. Uh, these will allow me to put the boards uh, across at the front of the truck right behind the cab. So let's go ahead and get at that. Just so you know what I'm doing in this next segment, <clears throat> where this sets into this uh, hole in the side of the bed of the truck, uh, I want to come up here and I'm going to take a piece of angle iron and all this is is uh, a piece of uh, one and a quarter by one and a quarter angle iron. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a bracket that will fasten onto this and point that way so that the L is like that. And that bracket will allow me to fasten the wood onto this upright that goes across behind the back of my truck. So let's get at doing that. First off, I have to cut it to length, and then I've got to drill holes in it. Okay. Okay, now I need two 30-inch sections because remember, we're only 30 inches above the cab, above the, the truck bed. So I don't have to worry about it falling. <clears throat> All right, I need 30 inches. You gotta always protect your eyes. Now I have done my share of dumb stuff in the past. It's always costly, you know. It costs you an extra wood, extra time, extra steel. You never know what the dumb stuff you do is going to be. So every chance I get, 
I try and stay away from doing dumb stuff. Well, for me, uh, what does dumb stuff mean? Well, in this instance, let's say the truck out there. Now, I need to make a set of these that's going to sit on these uprights, like that right there. That's where it's going to sit. And it's going to sit on this one, like that. And they're going to sit there, and the boards will go across. So if you consider this the back glass of my truck, so if I turn these up, see it's going to sit like that. Does that make sense? Uh, this one's going to sit like this. So that these can hold the wood on the back part of the truck. Now, for me, when I do this stuff, it just always makes good sense to make a model to begin with. So all I need to do right now is decide where these are going to sit. Mark out two holes on this side. Okay, mark out two holes on each side, on this side, one here and one there, that'll hold them on to the upright. Then I have to drill all the holes for the uh, for the cross members to go to. And that will hold that part on at the back part of the truck. So I'm going to go ahead and get at that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark where I want the holes to be. I don't want them to be the same place as where the other holes are. And you'll notice when I drilled the other holes, I drilled them farther over. That way, I knew that they wouldn't interfere with these. So I'm going to get these marked, and then I'll drill a hole and steel for you. I've got my steel marked where it needs to be. Now, for marking steel, you can use one of these. This is a soapstone marker. Probably can see it better there. That's a soapstone marker. Uh, it's great for marking straight lines and that kind of stuff, but for marking where holes are going to be, they're a little tough. So nine times out of ten, marking steel, I use a Sharpie. Just easier. Some people use paint markers. There's a whole bunch of different ways that you can mark steel. Uh, but I just use a Sharpie, or I use my, my uh, soapstone marker. But today I used a Sharpie. Now, I would need to drill these holes. So I'm going to start off with drilling the holes that go in the uprights so I don't lose the place of where they're at. But now, drilling steel. Drilling steel is a little bit different than drilling wood. Uh, steel has a tendency to want to get hung and spin around and stuff. So to save your little fingers, you'll notice I have a block of wood here. And what this block of wood is for, it's for I position my steel that I want to drill. And I'm going to drill that hole right there. And I hold that down. And then I take this clamp. and clamp this steel down. So that it's not going to jump all over the place. Now I'll hold it with this hand. Can you see that alright? I'll hold it with this hand. But now, I always like to have a little bit of lubricant when I'm cutting. This is just old dollar store stuff. Uh, I put a little lubricant on. Not a lot. Just enough to help that drill bit. Now, this bit was good and sharp for wood, but I may have to sharpen it for uh, to cut drill this steel. I don't slow the blade that bit down.
No, it's cutting just fine. Hold on to it with this hand. But you just got to take your time. Okay, that's it. They are ready to go in the truck. You can see now that they'll go on like this right here, and then the boards will go across and uh, get bolted onto this hanger. Now, when I uh, drilled these holes, one thing you, you need to know. When you're drilling a hole in steel, the lubricant makes all the difference in the world. And the reason being why you should use lubricant. And a lot of people go, well, that doesn't make sense. You're cutting into the steel. It seems like you'd want it to not be lubricated. Well, the lubricant just helps the chips, the metal chips, slide away easier and keeps them out of the way. And it provides so that it slides smooth on the part that's not cutting. And that cuts down on the amount of pressure on your drill. And finally, it helps keep the, the tip sharp. The sharpened tip will last. It lasted all of these. But if I hadn't lubricated, I'd have had to stop and sharpen that drill probably on each one of these hangers. But I didn't have to do that because I put a little lubricant on there. So these are ready to go on the truck. So now we're ready to start putting the sides on. Okay, that first one was really tough to get the nut on, but you'll notice it hangs over just a little bit. That's so when I put these sides on, ow, mash my finger. When I put these sides on, they will cover each other on the ends. So, okay, it's time to get the next one on. Now I'll show you how I do it. The way I set these up was that there would be three and a half inches between each post. So I've got my clamp here. Set my board up. I've already put one, I've already put one on the other side. ahead and mark it. Find my hole. Now I'll just go drill my holes, mount it, and continue up. Now what you'll notice when, when I get here, the front, the top board is only going to come to here. It's not going to go all the way up. Because if I want to put a tarp on top of this, I want the front of the tarp to be below the cab of the truck. That way it can come up and it won't catch nearly as much air. Okay, I'm going to get on with it. The back is on. But if you'll notice, this back is leaning toward the cab. Uh, I want to make sure that when I do this, that these are square with the bed. The reason I want them to be square with the bed is I don't want them whacking my cab up here when the truck flexes a little bit. So what I have to do is I take a, a square because it doesn't matter about level. The truck's sitting on a hill. It's not level. So I'm going to take a square and put in there. 
Then I'm going to take a couple of blocks of wood. took a block of wood and now that's square with my truck bed. I'll put the side rails on and they'll hold it square. It'll be done. Uh, I'll put the one here on the bottom and it'll hold it square. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting the side rails on. I do it just like the front rails. I'll put one here on the bottom and mark and then I'll just keep going up with the blocks and the and the clamps and uh, I'll get it started and then I'll come back to you. Uh, basically I've showed you everything you have to do to make a set of cattle racks. Uh, make sure it's square to the bed of the truck. Uh, that way it keeps it from racking. Uh, make sure that all of it's square to the bed of the truck both in and out and lengthwise uh, don't think think your truck's level and just put a level on it. Don't do it. Now, if if uh, as the year goes by, I'll probably let this weather a little bit. Then I'll probably paint it. Now, my granddad had a black truck, 1969 Chevrolet or 68 Chevrolet, that I remember as a kid. But it had a set of red cattle racks on it. Well, I've got a black pickup, and I may paint these red in memory of Paul, but I don't know. So, uh, I'll let these weather for a month or so because they're all pressure treated. The paint will adhere better if they've weathered some. So I'll let these weather, uh, then pick a good dry day and paint them. I don't know if I'll paint them black or if I'll paint them red. I might paint them red. All right, cattle racks are done. Uh, if you're afraid that uh, the cattle rack might lift out. I'll just tell you, it's moving the entire truck. You know, chances of that lifting out are slim and none. But you can always come right here and put a screw through the metal and into this wood that's sticking down in the hole. You know, you could do that. But you don't have to, in my opinion. Uh, I'm not going to. Now, this cattle rack, you'll notice up here at the top, I left a hole. What I intend to do later is I intend to make a top that goes on it that's made out of a piece of cattle panel and some boards that will just sit on there and I can just pin on the top in case I'm hauling animals that might try and climb out. Uh, they'll also, I'll also make a door, but for nine times out of ten, this will be the way this will sit. Uh, I remember being a kid, and uh, I was working with Paul and my brother. My brother's six years older than me, and uh, he had we had a set of cattle panels, and it had this uh, had a gate across where the bed is, where the tailgate is, and we were hauling about a 400 pound sow and six piglets, and I was I guess I was 12. My brother was. 18 or 19 I might have been 13 but we were hauling that sow and those piglets well when we got to where we were going to get them we wanted to get the piglets out before we got the sow because we knew she'd go where they were well we opened the door and grabbed one of the piglets and I was supposed to close the tailgate well that old sow said she was making a run for it and my brother kicked the tailgate closed as I was closing it and caught my fingers under these boards that were going across here. So when I make a when I make a door, I'm going to leave a gap about that high. So if you like these kind of videos and you like this homesteading, independent, do-it-yourself kind of lifestyle, come on out to the channel and subscribe. We do this stuff every week. Some weeks we up upload one video. Some weeks we upload five. Depends on what's going on. But we do it every week. It's all about homesteading, the homestead lifestyle. So I just barely beat the rain. It's time for me to get in out of the heat. So it's time for me to get on to the next thing.